Hey, buddies! Potato Milk Whiskey here, and welcome to Let's Play Stonehearth the Alpha 21. Now, this is actually one of my very first games that I actually was really confident in kickstarting. Um, and I, I actually bought the game during Kickstarter. I actually bought two copies, one for my friend, who, funny enough, never actually plays the game. Thanks, Morbus. Um, yeah, but this is like a kind of like Dwarf Fortress kind of style game, but it's it's three dimensional, and that's what really drew me about it is their their original vision and the videos, and they haven't strayed very far from it. They've made some minor adjustments, but overall they've stayed true to the vision. And it's a really fun game, and I think I'm finally ready to do a let's play of it, um, despite having been playing it now for like a year or two. Uh, so, the we're going to pick here from a kingdom, we're going to play as the Ascendancy, which are where the default choice, these were, it used to be these were the only people you could pick. Um, they live in sort of temperate forest lands. Um, we could live in the desert biome, but I will stick to the, um, the forest, it's more, um, it's probably a little bit easier uh, to understand what's going on. And we're going we're gonna to just play on a normal, normal adventure. We're going to start and pick our roster as well. So we have here Illowin Hunterton, who is a six mind, six body, which is one spirit. He's a hothead, so he has a hard time backing down from a fight, so he might make a good warrior. He's also quite good at um, crafting, so it might be hard to actually use him. Uh, Yon Yondel is a good crafter, because he has the heart of the crafter. All of Forest Rider has uh, the passionate engineer trait, that's actually really good. Uh, pretty decent mind and body, not a very good spirit, uh, is a cultist, so they believe in the secret bunny god. They're also a glutton, which means they eat quite a bit more than usual. But it also, it, you know, generally speaking, these traits are positive and negative. So, Elaine, Elena is a passionate footman, that's really good actually. Uh, Sam Hart is a little bit callous, and Scarlet Winsett is a glutton. So, uh, I'm pretty reasonably happy with this. Uh, set up. The only guy I'm going to re-roll is Illowin. Uh, because I... He, he didn't seem very good. He was just a hothead. He didn't have anything positive. But I'll live. Pack Mule. That seems way better. Uh, so I have a Pack Mule. I have... Well, maybe I'll roll John. He's a featherweight. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's just try and get a variety of stuff here. So I have a Passionate Footman. I'll keep the Callus. Um, I don't like the idea of having a Glutton, though. Hey, a hothead green thumb. That sounds like good. Like, stay, stay off my grass, you kids. That sort of thing. Um, now, Mel, we'll keep Mel, who is a glutton. I'm okay with having one glutton. I think two gluttons maybe was a little bit stressful on my um, my early game food supplies. That would be pretty crazy. Uh, we're going to do food for days because it's just the simplest and easiest sort of uh, setup to get started with. You start with a bunch of food, a little bit of gold, and with a farmer stick. And we're gonna get—we're pretty much gonna get start farming from the get-go. Uh, so let's start up. Uh, now we have to pick where we want to put our town, or rather the the playable area. So the the transparent sort of cube here that we're gonna be looking at. Oh, yeah, the um, the transparent cube or transparent square, I guess, is how you would call it. it uh, this dictates where we will be able to um, play. This will be the playable area. And you can see there's stuff over here. Um, depending on where I hold the cursor, the amount of trees in the area goes up and the wildlife goes up. So it's like, so generally speaking, up here, there's gonna be lots of minerals on these sort of gray areas. On the green squares, there's gonna be a lot of trees and plants. On these open sort of light green areas, there's going to be a lot of animals. And that sort of thing. And I like to have a good mix. So, for example, I could go over, say, here. I actually like the I like the idea of living in this forest. So I will live uh, right about here. This seems like a good area over here. We still have a little bit of water in our thing, and there's a little lake up here that we could play around with. Uh, maybe like a, simulate some fishing docks or something. So we're gonna plant right here. That's where I've decided to settle. So we're improvising morals. Uh, we're percolating the brain. I love I love it when games do this sort of sim Sims esque, you know, reticulating splines type type shenaniganry. Um, so now, with the fir very first thing we have to choose is where our settlement banner is going to go. Um, we have a pretty wide open plain over here, which is a blessing and a curse. Uh, 
it's good in that it means you have a lot of room for your um, village, but it's bad in that there's a lot of directions that bad people can come and kill you from. Um, now, I can, I can pick anywhere in this playable area to set up my town. I could really, honestly, I could set up here if I wanted to. Now, this would be a really bad idea, but I could do it. It's doable. Um, and, you know, I would actually be really interested in seeing if I could pull off a game on top of a mountain someday. But I, I don't think I'm that confident. I think I'll stick to uh, a more standard live on, live on the edge of a cliff type of deal. So I think it uh, looks like there's some sort of bunny god thing. I think it might mean they'll get upset if I harvest those. So I think right here looks like a good place to live. So I'm going to plant down my town banner right about here. And we will call this Poto Potatopia. Potatopia. Okay, uh, we're going to pause things right off the bat. So uh, probably the very first thing you want to do when you start up a game is get some wood. Wood, please. Yololo. It reminds me of Age of Empires whenever I think of that. So we're going to harvest a bunch of wood near the cliff. We'll just get all this wood just so we have a future stockpile of wood. Because uh, the advantage is we will be able to sell our wood in the early game to grab a little bit of um, resources when traders roll through. through. We will then set up a stockpile for our wood. Uh, probably around here we'll do like a oh, we'll do a 10 by 10 have a 100 wood storage for now uh, only wood for now uh, and then we'll do another 10 by 10 and this will be sort of a general stockpile that will be changed as we get through the game but the only thing it won't store is wood so that'll be what we do for now so they're going to run around, they're going to chop down all these trees, and they will also grab these stockpiles. Now we're going to want to get another thing to be done here. Uh, we want to find that person who had the green thumb, and I think it was Sips? No, it was Tibur Nonak. So we're going to change his job, and we're going to make him a farmer straight away, because we want to start growing food, because one of the ways you get new people is by having an abundance of food. So, um, oh, I also need a carpenter, actually. So who will be my carpenter? Ideally, I want someone who has a high engineer. So you, I don't want you to be my carpenter. I want someone with a high, um, high, whatever this is, mind score. So you could be my carpenter. Uh, how about you? You're a pack mule, so you're probably better off doing something else. Sips, how about you, Sips? We will make you our carpenter, Sips. Isn't, he, isn't Sips the Yogscast guy's name? I don't remember. Could be. Oh, and uh, just in case you're curious where well, you can see these green lines, I actually went into the options and I turned on, there is a, a sort of show hearth and paths. You can turn that off. You don't have to have that on. I like to have it on so I can see what they're doing and I can get a better understanding of what they're doing around the village. Um, so, first things first, uh, we want to build a house for the farmer. In fact, we're probably going to want two farmers to help really, 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 really fast grow food. Uh, so let's get started on a building. Now, you can you can use the sort of um, basic um, uh, pre-built houses, but we won't be doing that. The, probably the very first thing we're going to do is wait actually until our carpenter has grabbed his tool. Uh, and then we will craft a workbench. And he should run over now and pick up a piece of wood and then make a uh, tool bench. And then we should be able to, once that's made, place it. And we'll place it near the wood for now. Over there looks good. And someone should run over and pick this up. It looks like it's going to be our good friend Olive. I'm going to pick up that and place it here. There we go. And they're just grabbing things up, making sure they're stockpiled. All right, so our workbench is in place, and now we can get started on some of these things. So, for example, we could build a farmhouse. Uh, these, these are things I made when I was experimenting, so we're going to design our own custom building here. Um, now, where are we going to put our farm? I, th I like the idea of maybe putting our farm right here. So this is going to be a farm for two people to live in. Uh, so we're going to want some, some room here. So I think at least a 10 by 10 is like a good starter size to get the layout sort of plant so we will place two beds like so 
Oh, you know what? I want to uh, cancel this. We need to craft some stuff first. Uh, so let me go in here to this workbench. Ah, our carpenter is not a high enough level yet for this sort of stuff. We could make some log piles. Um, I tell you what, why don't you keep... Why don't you make a couple beds for me? Keep a couple chairs in inventory as well. Um, keep one door in inventory. And then we'll let him craft all that and then he should level up and then we'll have more options for the building. Uh, in the meantime, I'm also going to want to harvest a little bit of stone. So I'm going to, I think, yeah, I'll, I'll mine a little tunnel over here. How about a... Oh, you know what I want? I want to do a slice so I can see better. And then I want to do... Uh, we'll do a uh, big old tunnel. We could do like a big old tunnel, but I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just do a 12 by 12 to dig out. And that should get us a little bit of stone to get started. I'll turn off slice mode so we can see the full game now. So how are you doing, Carpenter? Uh, he's starting to level up. So once he hits level 2, I think we will have much more options with regards to what we can build in our houses. See, they are already digging out a bit of stone over here. We're also getting some silver ore and stuff. All right, so he's leveled up. So I can pause the game again now. And I can start editing this house. And I should have available to me, yep, more options. So we place two beds. I'm going to place at the foot of these beds. I'll place a wooden dresser just for decoration. And then I'll, I'll get a different... Oh, there's a writing desk. Yeah, I'll put another wooden dresser. So they have a little bit of uh, belongings for themselves. Uh, I will make a slight, make it slightly bigger because they're going to want somewhere to eat food, right? Uh, and then I will place down perhaps a dining table for them to eat at. Oh, that's not a dining table. This is a dining table. I will place down a dining table uh, about, say, here. Yeah, and then I'll place a chair on either end. So two people are going to live in here. We're going to have two farmers, essentially. And I, I suppose they should also have like a little writing desk, you know, for their own personal entertainment. And I'll stick that right there and I'll put another chair. I'll put like a cathedral arch chair so they have a little bit nicer, you know, I'm trying to make them make sure they have a nice house, you know. All right, now we can put some walls up. Now, uh, what kind of walls do we want? I think I like the idea of a farmhouse having uh, nice dark columns for its wood. And then I'd like it to have these cocoa brown. No, how about... Yeah, I like the stripiness because it makes it look like a nice nice farmhouse. Uh, I could also do this sort of thing. Yeah, these look quite nice. Um, tell you what, we'll do Pattern of Napa and Ash. Yeah, let's do that. Well... Uh, no, let's do the uh, Punga and Tobacco Brown. Let's do that. I like that. See, that looks quite nice. So then we're also going to want to put our doorway in and we'll just put a regular old wooden door in here over by the middle of the two beds I suppose could be a good spot for it or we'll put it right in the center. Now they're also going to want some decorative stuff uh, so I suppose we will put up a wooden wall lantern above each bed and then we'll stick a window in between those two. How about a nice nice diamond window for the house and then Right beside the dinner table, they'll have a nice expansive window to look out while they eat. And then for the writing desk, I'm thinking a nice tall window. No, we'll do just a regular, we'll do a wide window so they, when they're doing their writing, they can see out into the, um, into the neighborhood. And you know, that seems like a pretty reasonable setup. I think we'll, we'll, we'll just plop in a tall window over here as well. And then that'll that'll be the house. I think that's a good little setup. Uh, I suppose we could actually as well. We'll put another one of these. We'll put a little light outside, a little porch light for them. Uh, how about right there? And we'll also carpenter sign in sign. No, we will give them a little bit of a driveway. I like to use the um, where is it? I like to use the dark regal blue as my roads. But, you know, for this one, I'll do, I'll do a nice, I'll do tuna. Let's do tuna. I'll do a three by three little, um, 
little pathway for their house so they can connect up to the main road that goes around. Now there's also going to be something else they're going to want. They're going to want a little storehouse, but we'll build that separately. We need to put a roof on this house, actually. Um, and I think, you know, that sort of thing. I'll make the roof just three high. And I will put no overhang. I think I'll just leave it sort of as a basic roof. And I think just for the sake of a little bit of cuteness, we'll put a little window up here. Make it look kind of cool and neat. Because, you know, you, you kind of want to make this balance of, you know, making a cool village and making an aesthetically pleasing village. Um, so I think I actually want to make some modifications here. Um, so let me see if I can get this sliced away. Because I'm wondering where I'm going to be putting the farms for these guys. I think I'll put the farms out back. Um... In which case it would make sense to have another door over here. So I think I will stick a door down if I make this go away. Which means I'm going to have to move the table and chairs a little bit. Let me see if I can get you just to move them back a little bit just so there's a little bit more room. Okay, that should be fine now. So there's going to be a way out the back to get to the farm essentially. And then I'll have like a little storage yard on the side here. Um, at some point, I'll, I'll get around to doing that. Okay, I finished editing. Uh, looks good to me. Simple wooden desk, simple wooden chair. So some of these things, it's going to take a while for this carpenter. But the, the, the really good thing about this is it's going to offer an opportunity for our, we'll call this uh, the farmer house. So this is going to be our farmer house. Okay, so we know where that's going to go. Let's stick down our farms. Uh, let's get started here. I'll put like a space. Uh, three, three, three. So around, yeah, I suppose we'll start the farm over here. And we're going to want a pretty big farm. Maybe a f 5 by 5 type thing. And then a, a 5 by 11 here. And then another 5 by 11. Um, this one's going to be turnips. This one's going to be carrots. This one's going to be pumpkins. And that'll be that. I'm also going to want to craft another farmer's uh, tool, actually. I'm, also, I'm going to craft a wooden practice sword and a rough wooden sword. Or rather, a, a, a rough shield. Because we are, by the end of the first day, we are going to want at least one footman. So these guys should all run back and start building this town hall. Or rather, this uh, house. Now, usually what I do when I start these off these villages is I actually um, I make... A sort of big house for them all to sleep in but I'm gonna I'm, I'm trying something new this time a grizzled traveler he brought us one basket of turnip turnips some rabbit jerky and a basket of berries I, I love it used to be that they would build tiles one by one but it seems like they've given them an AOE now which really makes the it, it just makes it play a little bit better in my opinion um, so I think that's a I think that was a really good decision the developers made with regards to like just playability of the game. Um, so it looks like our first chairs and stuff are being put out. Carpenter's going hog wild. And I love if I take away these slices, you can see they they're starting to build little scaffolding to. Uh, go up to these walls and stuff like that. I think that's fantastic. It's one of my favorite things about the game is they really, really nailed the whole like scaffolding type stuff. All the internal parts of the house are nearly ready. And now I suppose, I suppose there's no harm in speeding it up. Uh, our farmer is actually also doing a bit of work over here. See, he's getting the fields tilled and he'll start planting the crops here soon once he has them all ready. And he won't actually get level ups until he harvests the food, but that's fine. Having the three fields going will be uh, will be a good a good run for us. Ah, he leveled up again, so that actually brings up some new stuff that he can build. For example, the carpenter tool bench. <clears throat> we will make one of those actually. Um, eventually, we're not in a rush to make it, but we will make one. Uh, 
looking pretty good. He can make pretty much anything now, uh, if he so chooses. We don't have the tools. We could make a mason's chisel and hammer, and we will want a mason's chisel and hammer, and we will want another farmer's hoe. Um, we'll also want a weaver's spindle, but I think we're a little bit of time away from that. Uh, are there any easy to access food sources over here? It doesn't look like it. it does not look like it. Building away here. So who was it that was going to be my footman? I think there was someone who had enthusiasm for that, right? It was Elena. Elena is going to be my footman. And she has actually a pretty good health and spirit, which is pretty good because it gives her courage. So she's quite courageous and quite strong, but she's not so creative and good at crafting. Which is good because she has footman enthusiasm. She like rolled the perfect, um, the perfect setup that we want from a footman. Now they're going to be a little bit upset that they're eating on the floor. Um, but hopefully over time as we alleviate we're going to start alleviating those problems because in here there should be oh there's no table so people aren't sitting down to eat oh wait no a couple of them are there we go and they should be a little bit happier uh even though like for example if we look at the happiness difference here they should be my real meal was raw ah okay You can see the fields are planted and once the fields are planted the really good thing is farmers will then just pretty much haul goods around and do whatever they uh you know do certain tasks for the town i think you can actually see what they will do if you go, yeah see they'll haul things and they'll do their job essentially which is really cool because they'll um it means farmers will you know clean up your town while they don't need to do their farming stuff which is what you want right you want a tidy town looks like he's also um doing a little bit of placing stuff he's, he's running around now he's hauling things uh, i think the house is finished yes it is so we finished our first house and now it's time to assign the beds so uh, the first one will be going to tibber tibber will take the first bed and that'll be that well it's not quite finished they still have to put up the lights But uh, that should not be an issue. Right, so. Um, uh, what are we going to do next? I think we're going to put out, uh, we're going to make a little food shack, I suppose, at some point. Uh, probably the next thing we're going to want is a carpentry workshop. It's going to be the big thing, I think. So let's get that started. Um, well, I suppose we're not quite ready for that, are we? So they've planted a light now, so that should provide some light. Can we make some aesthetic stuff? I think I want to queue up a few more things to have in reserve. I go in here. Um, I think I will delete these. Because it seems like they will create things out of necessity as they go. I will want to have... Three of these in inventory at all times, I think, is a reasonable thing. Um, yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll keep, we'll keep a wooden park bench in inventory at all times as well. You can put like a little park bench outside these guys' houses. Uh, so that's kind of, that's kind of a good start. So we want to build another house. Uh, this time it's going to be for uh, a carpenter and we could if I go into building and designing, there is actually a carpenter house that's already kind of set up here. And I suppose there's no harm in using that one. So if we rotate this around, we can make, we can just, we can use it and then modify it as, as we desire. Um, so I, I want to put them close together, but I want to leave a decent bit of room between them. I think five tiles is like a decent room, amount of room to leave. And I want their fronts to line up, so that looks like a good spot. We can now edit this to our heart's desire. So if we look through here. Uh, he has a little... Oh, you're supposed to space them out a bit, huh? Well, I guess that's that. So our, this is going to be our carpenter house. It's a little bit more... Um, Spartan, I suppose, could be one way to put it. Uh, we're going to make some changes, though. We're going to want to plant down a few of these storage crates. 
Oh, I like I like the way they've done this. So I, I am gonna I am gonna use this, but I am gonna want to make some small changes. So the big first big change I'm gonna make is I want the road. If I can bring this up, I'm gonna want a little bit of patch of road here. And I suppose they will eventually be joined up, but not for now. Then I'm going to want a storage area. So let me grab these crates. There's a fine crate. I like to sell my fine stuff. So I will make a one, two, three crates. No, those are bad positions. So let me, yeah, we'll put those three crates down. Uh, and they'll be fine. I would probably actually move them forward a little bit, but they'll be they'll be fine where they are because I can actually, I can I can live with the way this is actually right now. Um, it's not ideal, but I'll live with the I'll live with this setup. Then I'm going to want to, um, yeah, this should be good actually. I think it's it has lights, it has everything, so we'll finish building this. We'll call this carpenter house. Yes, start building. Okay, daily update. We have enough food. Oh, we don't have enough net worth though to get another population. So that's that. All right, so the first this first chest is going to be for wood and only wood. The second chest is going to be stuff for like two for wood as well. And then this third chest is going to be stuff for like Sorry, this is going to be for doors and windows and furniture. And this is going to be for defenses and decorations. And then we can go over here and we can take off those few things. So now they should be lifted out of the stockpile and moved over to the carpentry area. Um, and we can also get rid of this wood stockpile and then they should fill up this chest instead. So I'm going to undeploy this chest, undeploy this workbench, and they should redeploy it over here at some point. Farmer is pulling in the first sets of food here. That's good news. I will eventually build a little raw food stockpile and then like a kitchen over here. Got our little front patio area done. I actually will move. I would like to move these over one tile. I'll live with the way they are now though. Looks like they're getting along building. That's good news. This needs to be moved eventually. Uh, okay, so I think it's time to assign Elena to her new job as a footman. Because it's probably a about time we're going to start getting attacked by very weak um weak enemies and we want to be ready for that we don't want to we don't want to get caught with our pants down you know nobody wants that to happen ah merchant has arrived so we're going to have plenty of wood to sell oh i took all my wood out of a stockpile so that kind of whoops i will sell this fine large crate though well what can i buy here padded vest Ooh. I actually would like to buy those, so what am I going to sell? Sell some of these things. I need some serious cash here. Okay, I want a padded vest. Um, how am I going to get... I need another... I want at least one of these worker outfits, so I need another 34 cash. So I'll sell. I'll sell these things. Um, so I need another 13. I need another 18 cash. Uh, I have another fine crate, so it's. I need another 10. So I'll sell two of these. One of these. Okay. Awesome. So I got some worker uniforms. So now my. Uh, my fighter should pick, go ahead and pick up this padded vest. And that should increase her defense. Um, which is actually pretty good. Plus three defense is actually, it's like three, three extra shields. Um, 
And I think one of my workers picked up the... I don't know which one it was. I, oh, I think it was you. So you should have the upgraded worker's outfit, which I think increases your speed. Yes. Devoted. And if I were to check, for example, this... Oh, uh, the, this guy. Yeah, see, he doesn't have the devoted buff, which I think is coming from the equipment. Uh, anyway... I want to thank you guys very much for watching this first episode of Stone Hearth. We will be continuing this series, so please remember if you want to see more from this series, you can subscribe to my channel to get notified when new videos come out. If you want to directly support my channel, please leave a like on the video. And if you want to give me your feedback, go ahead and leave a comment. Other than that, I want to thank you very much for watching. I love you all very much, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.